All right, welcome back to Everyday Builds, where I am currently at the moment working on my house a little bit every day so that I can hopefully get all of the renovations done in my house in the next six months or so with the goal to sell it next spring. If you've been following along the last couple days, I've been working on this bar area, which is down in my basement, put up this cool little mural. Yesterday, went ahead and built this frame to go around it out of some walnut. And today I need to kind of fine tune it. It isn't, it's just kind of sitting there right now. I need to scribe it to the floor. It drops down a little bit in the middle so there's a gap. Go ahead and scribe that so it fits nice and tight. And then over here against this wall, I'll go ahead and scribe that as well so that also fits really tight, no gaps at the top or bottom. And, and if I have more time after that, today I only have a few hours to work on this stuff, I need to also wrap this post here in the same walnut. So if there's more time, I will get started on that as well. But for now, I'm gonna get this fit nice and perfect and then maybe even give it a sand so that it's ready for some stain. So yeah, let's get started. So if you're not aware of what scribing is, you can see the bottom of this frame here at that far end down there, it's tight against the floor. You come to the middle and there's a gap there. And then you get to this far end and you can see it's obviously tight to the floor there. So the goal is to basically take the contour of the floor and cut it out of the bottom of this. And I've done a lot of scribing over the last couple years and I will say I've gotten pretty good at it and I'm gonna show you my favorite way of scribing right now. So when it comes to scribing, I've done probably 10 different ways of, of trying to scribe using a pencil, a compass, different jigs that exist. I've bought probably five different jigs for scribing, but by far my favorite one is this razor scribe tool, which just has a razor blade and pairs with some blue painter's tape really well. And this is great because instead of trying to follow along like a pencil mark that you know you can't always see very well, this works by just putting blue painter's tape along the bottom edge, setting this blade to the desired height, and then cutting into that tape. You peel one side off and that gives you your perfect line to cut along, and I'm gonna show you right here. So I put on the painter's tape and now you just want to set the razor blade to the height of the biggest gap that needs to be scribed. And that's basically going to make sure that when we cut off material from the ends to drop this whole thing down that this will be flush and so will that. So really it will probably be removing almost no material from here and all of the material from the ends. So this has a bunch of different slots for setting it to different depths, so I'm just going to find which one gets right to that biggest gap, and then I'll just run this along, and that'll give me my line. So now you can see right here where that little razor blade went along, made a little cut. So you can just go ahead and peel this piece off and that's gonna be our cut line now. So peel that all the way down and then at the middle here, it's gonna basically be nothing. So cut will stop right there, but just you can see right there, that's exactly how much material and the curve and everything needs to be taken off so I'll just do that with the track saw now and should be a perfect fit. And I will say this doesn't have to be done with a track saw if you don't have one which is totally fine you can do this either if you have a table saw well not with this but 
you know, if you just had a single piece like a cabinet filler or something, you can just do it on a table saw following this line. Or if you just have like a, a circular saw, that can totally work just fine as well. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the track saw so that it actually bevels into the piece. So it's going to have a little 10 degree bevel underneath. And I'm going to come back with my random orbit sander and sneak up on that line and get it absolutely perfect. And giving that little bevel to it just makes it so I can take off a lot more material a lot quicker with the sander. So you'll see in a sec. So you can see I got really, really close to that tape line, but not all the way to it because I definitely don't want to take off too much. And now I can come back with my random orbit sander and just hit right on that line and just sneak right up to that tape and it should be perfect. Now you can see that took it right to the tape and is now perfect. see if it fits I think it should be should be perfect all right got her back in and remember right in the middle used to be a big old gap right there now it's just about perfect could probably fine-tune it even a little bit more there's maybe a hair but that doesn't bother me at all. That's that's pretty dang good. From from back here, that is just about perfect. So the next thing I want to do is there's a little bit of gap up here in this wall. It kind of let's get some focus here. A little gap at the bottom and at the top of the wall. So I'm going to do that same process along here. Get that nice and tight. And then one thing I did want to say is you never want to do them at the same time. Always do the bottom one first because that may change kind of how it sits up against the wall. Don't try to do like two at once. You know, get the bottom scribed, then scribe the side after because if you try to do them both, it may change kind of how this actually sits. So do the first, then the second. And while it's in the garage, I'm going to take a second to just give it a quick sand. I'm going to start with the inner edges and then work to the face. Just sand it real quick. And then this part will be done and I can move on to wrapping that post with the rest of the walnut.
All right, so there's the frame all done and in. You can see a little gap at the top, but I'm gonna fill that with a, a trim piece later and then also put like an LED light up there. So that'll be coming in the future. But you can see that scribe came out really good. It's really good on the floor. And then this side has a little gap, but that's going to be hidden by the paneling that's going to go on this wall. Which I'm going to start right now, I think. This isn't in yet, so I'm always nervous to start cutting things without, you know, securing everything. But I'm going to want to take that back out in order to finish it, because finishing it in place will be a little bit more difficult than than doing it in the garage. So I think I'm just going to start cutting some pieces and seeing how they fit in here and, and go from there. All right, so I cut my first piece to fit in here. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do this and it, attach it. You know, I've got three choices where I can either just butt them up against each other, nail them all in, and hope that they don't shrink and you know expand and contract, which they're going to but how much you know is it gonna make a difference so i can either do that i can glue them up you know so that there there's a panel on this side panel on this side and then kind of a cap on the front here or i can do kind of like a like a shiplap style where i put like a rabbit in each one with like a tongue that overlaps i'm not sure what i want to do yet but the other thing that i'm running into is that i'm gonna have to plane all of these boards down quite a bit because they can only be maybe a half inch thick because of of everything that I've milled up. The thickest one I have or the, the one with the biggest width is at about five and three quarters and that is right at the edge of you know if you've got this on one side and, and on the other side it barely is going to cover and I really want that that cap to be a full piece on the face I don't want to see the the edge of these boards I'd rather have one full cap so these are going to be playing down a bunch um, still trying to figure out kind of how I want to do this um, not sure I'm leaning towards gluing everything up just so I don't have to worry about anything I don't have to route rabbits into them just you know get my pieces glue them together and then cut them to fit, I think is probably the best option. All right, so I've decided that I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue everything up. So these three boards here are gonna be that bigger panel on the outside of the bar. So I'll glue all of these together. I'm gonna glue these two up for the, the inside of the bar where I just did that first piece, which was this one. And then this is gonna be that front cap piece. So I like that idea. I like the idea of gluing them up and I think that'll look good, clean. The only thing is I have to plane these down a ton because of what I was talking about with, this is only, it's just under like five and three quarter. So in order to make that wide enough, these have to be thinner because they're going to go on each side. So I need to make sure that I plane all of these down enough. And these ones I have to do now. I can glue this up the way it is and send it through my planer to get this side thinner. But these need to be planed pre-glue up because I won't be able to plane it because it's going to be too wide afterwards. So I'm going to take these down to about three-eighths of an inch and then glue them up. And that'll probably be it for the day. Um, throw these in some clamps with some glue and then I'll come back tomorrow and get them cut to size and should hopefully be done with that finally. I think I finally figured out what I'm going to do here. I already planed these down to about a half inch, which 
now that I figured something else out, I don't think I needed to do. It's not a big deal. It'll still look exactly the same and, and function just fine. Um, but what I'm going to do is I realized that this panel that I was going to glue up, I only need about nine inches of it, which leaves about a two inch piece that I'm going to cut off. So I'm just going to cut that off now, add it to this face piece that I want to use on, on the front of that column. And if I glue those up, then I have plenty of, of width in that board to cap the front of that. So I'm going to basically take two inches off of this, then glue these up and take this two inch piece, glue this up. So that face piece will be kind of two pieces, but I think that'll be better than trying to make these inner and outer panels really skinny. So we'll see. So now this will be my inner panel, which I've got just enough room to make that. And then now this will be the face panel, which is these two pieces that I'll glue up. And that'll be plenty to cap off the face of that. So I'm just gonna glue everything up and that'll be it. I think this is gonna work really well. I think this one was the one I was worried about. That was that that face piece, but I think, I think these boards match really well. So I think it's gonna look pretty good. We'll see. <laughs> 